Good morning everyone and welcome to St Mary's morning prayer. Sorry for the slight delay but we are here on this beautiful spring day and you're very welcome to be sharing our Felder Brennan morning prayer with us. So let's just uh, have a couple of breaths as we just relax and focus and calm ourselves. So just breathe in slowly and then just exhale slowly. Just to try and still your busy mind as we come into the presence of Almighty God. You might want to give your body a little wriggle just to try and relieve a bit of tension, just to get nice and relaxed. Lord, open our lips to bless you, and our mouths shall declare your praise. Blessed are you, gracious God. We will give you glory and praise forever. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This I call to mind. And therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will put my hope in him. So we spend a moment of quiet as we invite our God of hope to be enthroned in our lives, in the midst of every stressful, stubborn and seemingly hopeless circumstance and relationship, in every seemingly impossible heart, country, situation. So let's just spend that quiet time now. Almighty God, in view of your great mercy, 
we lay our lives down as a morning sacrifice for you. Choosing to die to self, we ask you to pour your mighty resurrection power through us, that Jesus may be revealed and your kingdom come in power, changing us and redeeming the world. Amen. So, for this morning, Mark is going to come and read to us. So, I'm going to move the screen this a bit. Here we go. Oh, here we go. There you go. There is Mark. Good morning, everybody. It's the first time I've done this, so I'm a bit nervous. Oh, oh. <laughs> It'll be fine. So, we are reading from Psalm 119. From verse 161. 161 is to that the right, end. Jane? To the end. Is oh, that right? It is. Okay, very good. <laughs> Rulers persecute me without cause, but my heart trembles at your word. I rejoice in your promise like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous laws. Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. I wait for your salvation, O Lord, and I follow your commands. I obey your statutes for I love them greatly. I obey your precepts and your statutes, for all my ways are known to you. May my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. May my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. May my lips overflow with praise, for you teach me your decrees. May my tongue sing of your word, for all your commands are righteous. May your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord and your law is my delight. Let me live that I may praise you, and may your law sustain me. I have strayed like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I have not forgotten your commands. Thank you very much, Mark. Back on screen. <laughs> so those were the last two sections of that very long psalm you've heard, Sin and Shin and Tor. And um, some believe that uh, there's a possibility that this was written by David, as it sort of points to um, in here about being persecuted without cause. And of course, David, as we know, was persecuted by princes, by um, Saul and his associates without cause. Um, but in here the psalmist is saying that this persecution doesn't make him lose his awe of God's word, which he loves because he knows it was precious and enriched his life. And he goes on to say, um, here the psalmist speaks of his continual praise of God's word. And we also see the opposites of love and hate. 
as the one who truly loves the pure truth of God will naturally hate lies. And in 1, 6, 5 and 6, here the psalmist speaks of the great love he had for the law and how that had benefited his life. He displays the sorts of active faith and trust that saves. He had faith in God for salvation. The psalmist continues by saying that he kept the word of God not only with outward action, but also with his soul. His love for God was deeply rooted. And then in the last section in Tor, as the psalmist draws near to the end of this psalm, he appears to come to the feet of God, for whose help he is imploring. So in 169, he implores God for understanding. He wanted his thoughts to be transformed according to the word of God. The same thoughts can be found in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, where it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect with God, the perfect will of God. The psalmist prays as we should to be transformed by God's word, not by the world. And the psalmist continues to praise God and speak of his word. He knew, he knew the purity and the inerrancy of God's word and wanted to speak it to others. Then in 173, he now longs for salvation and he loves God's word. The psalm finishes with the psalmist speaking of his dependence on the word of God who seeks us. He emphasizes his and our greatest need, our dependence on God and on understanding him, on deliverance, on being able to worship God rightly, the power to live an upright life and the strength to persevere. He finishes by praying that God will seek his servant. The psalm ends by reminding us that the power and greatness of God's word does not rest only on its literary brilliance, but also on the fact that God comes to us and seeks us in and through his word. And for us, of course, that is through Jesus Christ. So let us pray. God of mercy, swift to help us. Pour forth our praise, fill our hearts with the peace you gave to those who wait for your salvation in Jesus. Amen. God, sometimes we wander and stray. Things in our life creep in. And sometimes we find ourselves far from you. We get lost and begin to feel the effects of being distant. Seek your sheep, Lord. Sometimes when we wander, bring us back. When we stray, be quick to correct us, Lord. Help us never to forget your commandments. Never forget. Help us never to forget your words. Sometimes your commandments become drowned out by our busy world and our busy lives. Come and find us when we stray, Lord. Like sheep, we often get lost and only know our way back when we hear the voice of our shepherd. We love you, Lord because you first loved us. Keep us by your side, Lord. Amen.
Lord, as we celebrate the United Nations International Day of Living Together in Peace, let us pray for people to live together in unity and peace. May we be united in difference and diversity and seek to find solidarity in a desire for peace and harmony. Amen. Father, we pray for each other on our journeys of faith. May we let go of things that impede our growing in faith and open our hearts to receive Christ in unexpected people and places. Lord, we pray for those who are preparing for confirmation across the country and in this church who will be meeting tomorrow. Pray for them on their faith journey. That they may know more, know more of you, but that they may realise that this is just a step in their journey, that this is a continuing lifelong journey. Their love for you may deepen. Let them know that you will always be beside them in this journey through life on earth. So we live with you in the heavenly realms. Father, we pray for strength and perseverance for Christians in China to enable them to stand firm against persecution. We pray the authorities see that Christians are a force for good and harmony in society and stop their persecution of the church. Thank you for the amazing example of our brothers and sisters in China who worship you in difficult circumstances. We thank you for the freedom we have May we not take for granted the freedoms that we have in this country. May we remember all those across the many countries of this globe that do not have those freedoms to worship you and yet still do. May they receive protection. May your 
copy to all those who are in the prison for who have been found worshipping me. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters across the world where there are so many places where there is so much disharmony and hatred and fighting, so much poverty and hunger. So we pray for Ukraine, for Sudan, for Yemen, for Syria, Afghanistan, Myanmar, to name but a few, Lord, that you know where your children are hurting. for resolutions to be found, for hearts to be changed. Pray, Lord, for those who negotiate peace, to be able to speak to each other, to be listened to and heard. Lord, we pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Father, we pray for our young people who are starting to sit exams. We pray that they will be able to Keep their anxiety levels down. Pray for their physical and mental health. We pray, Lord, that they will be able to do the best that they can. Pray that their parents can support them. Pray that the 
as schools can do what they can too. Overall, Lord, we just pray for protection of our young people. Pray for their positivity around them, Lord. Pray for work and college places for them. Help us, Lord, to all come together. To see how important we all are together. this in your name. Amen. Lord, we pray for this village as it has so many changes and vacancies at this moment. We pray for the village shop as it's up for sale that somebody will buy it and it will continue to play the important role as the, one of the hubs of the village. We pray for the school that a new head will be appointed. We pray for the staff and children at the moment that the staff will be able to hold the reins and uh, continue to take things forward. We pray for the church here whilst we're in vacancy. Pray for the leadership team whilst we hold things and wait to wait to advertise. Wait while we call our next vicar. Give us perseverance and patience, Lord. We know we, we, we are in your hands. We are safe.
but as a spirit of courage to go forward to obey your will for us to shine your light into this village in Jesus name we pray Amen pray for all those we know are in a time of crisis today all those who are on our prayer chain in this benefice all those on our hearts those, Lord, known only to you, we offer them to you now for your healing, for your loving touch, for your comfort, your sense of peace Lord we pray now bring our prayers together by saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O high King of heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send the Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me, on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. So let us finish today's service by saying the grace together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in whenever you're listening to this. Have a lovely week. Take care and I will see you all next week. Until then, bye bye.